What I would like to do now is give you a little bit of a demo of service application architecture and some of the planning diagrams that can be really helpful as you design and plan the architecture for your service applications. So as we talked about, there's a number of different implementations um, and flexibility when it comes to service applications, the way that we can uh, distribute them and segment them. So what we're going to look at is, first of all, um, what TechNet provides in terms of a, uh, diagrams and worksheets that will be helpful for you as you start your planning process. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So first of all, I'm going to bring up, uh, this is the location on TechNet where you'll find planning worksheets for SharePoint Server 2010. Um, and in reality, if you look over on the navigation side over here on the left, you'll, fly, you'll find it's a whole section for planning and architecture including planning worksheets, of which there are many that will be very helpful for you as you uh, go through various levels of planning your architecture. But also, if I go ahead and click on technical diagrams, now you might think that these technical diagrams are just um, for, for your own sort of understanding of what SharePoint looks like in diagram form. Right? But it's not just for education, it's also diagrams that you can use. They give you VSD uh, versions of these files so that you can actually make edits and start to turn these diagrams into your own architecture diagrams if you wanted to. It's not just about printing out um, a diagram so you can learn the different components. So you can see here they provide the file type of VSD, PDF, or XPS for every one of their diagrams. And we can see here are some models. Uh, corporate portal with classic authentication, um, corporate portal with claims-based authentication, SharePoint 2010 products document uh, or deployment services in SharePoint 2010 products, and it just goes on and on. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Let's take a look at one of these, the design sample corporate portal with classic authentication. If you click this Visio link, you can download the VSD file, which I have done already and have opened it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, at first glance, when it's uh, uh, zoomed out like this, it can be a bit overwhelming. But as you are probably starting to realize, a SharePoint architecture is quite extensive. There's a lot of moving parts, which is why a diagram like this is really, really important, uh, an important part of your design strategy and your design of a SharePoint environment. So let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. So let's go to 75%. Now, I'm going to scroll on up to the, towards the top. So we can see that this is a sample. And we've categorized this. We can see users, zones, and authentication. So the users being uh, our partners in this example, and they're going to be in the extra net zone. Our remote employees are in the default zone. Uh, there's remote employees. Here's internal employees are in our intranet zone. Okay, and then over here, a little bit further, a little bit more disconnected, are our customers who connect to our internet zone. Now, internal employees, you can see these connections are going to bring us down. We're all connecting through a load balancer, which then shows us as we scroll up a little bit, we've got our front end servers. Okay, those are our web servers, and then we've got our application server. In this case, there's just one, but there can be multiple application servers. And our application pool. Uh, here's one application pool, app pool number one, for the central administration site. Um, then we've got clustered or mirrored database servers running SQL Server. So this is our main server architecture right here. A couple of front-end servers, an application server, and our clustered database servers. However, the rest of this is a logical architecture diagram. So as I scroll over, we can see here now we've got an additional IIS website, SharePoint Web Services. This is what we're really focused on in this particular module, which is our SharePoint application services, the web services. So in application pool two, we can see here a lot of the various different um, service applications, search, Web Analytics, Managed Metadata, the User Profile Service, Excel Calculation Services, Access Services, Word Viewing, and so on. So 
we can see how they're categorized in the different groups that we talked about. Here's a group called the default group, and it's the red box that goes around all of these. Okay, so these are application services that have been grouped and are assigned to other application pools. So here is application pool 3, which has uh, a web application and a site hierarchy for published intranet content. Here's one that has a site hierarchy for our team sites. So it's a different application pool, and we've dedicated our team sites to that. As I scroll across, I've got another web application for my sites. Okay, so a number of different applications, and notice they all use the default grouping of web services or application services, everything that's in that red. Now, notice this blue box. I've got Excel calculation services, access, word viewing, and so on. And it carries over to some other partition services that includes some subscription settings, managed metadata, some more search stuff. Um, and all of that is in a custom grouping. So we are pushing the custom grouping of services, which does not include all of them. We've segmented them. Right? Notice it does not include the user profile information, the business data connectivity, secure store, and a subset of the managed metadata. So we come back over here and see that the custom group is going to our partner web. This would be our extra net. So in other words, our partners have access to some of the services in the farm, but not all of the services in the farm. We don't want our partners to have access to our uh, uh, user profile service. Some of the managed metadata might be more private. So we're giving, we're, we're spreading the load of these applications and we're reusing some of them, uh, but not all of them. Scroll back up and there's one more red box here, which is another uh, usage of the default group for a different, um, for a different farm, in this case specifically the internet group. So we're really just using some of the managed metadata and the search for the website. This is the company internet site. Now you'll notice it also has some very specific content deployment coming across here from the extranet site. So this is where we can sort of author and deploy content across to the internet site utilizing um, a connection and a specific workflow of content deployment. So we'll get into that in more detail at a later time. But you can see here in this diagram that we've got an extensive amount of detail in terms of how we've planned out and how we've isolated and reused some of the application services uh, inside of this environment. Now, the reason this is important for you is that not only is it good from a learning perspective, you can take a look at this data and um, and essentially learn from it as you plan yours, you can reuse these diagrams. So as you open them in Visio, you'll have editing capability. You can rename some of these things. You can move some of these boxes around and make them fit your environment. And even as I scroll down further and I get to the database level, you can see the sizes, the details, the quota numbers. Um, obviously, those are examples of numbers that you would want to change in your environment and could change in your environment. A lot of detail. And as you continue to scroll through the rest of this, Visio document, you'll see a, a lot more additional information, like a place where you can enter the URLs of the various different zones. So it ends up being a very detailed strategic document that will help you. Remember, this should be a living document. You'll continue to make changes to the document every time that uh, you, you need to. Don't leave it as a static uh, document. So that's a little bit about how we um, can utilize some of what Microsoft has provided for us in order to develop uh, a plan and a strategy for designing our application services in SharePoint 2010.